Doug's charger belongs to the sheriff's office. I just clocked this son of a 96 in a 35. You, sir, are a disrespect to our profession this evening. If you say it one more time, I'm going to hold you in custody and make you tell the judge in the morning that you have a law enforcement ID. While corruption can sidetrack even the best of the best, there are some officers who still stay true to their badge and won't hesitate to shut down those stepping out of line. These next cases capture those moments the best. Doug's charger belongs to the sheriff's office. I just clocked this son of a 96 in a 35. On June 20th, 2023, an officer of Henry County, Georgia pulled over a vehicle going 96 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone, but found himself in the most bizarre scene when he realized who he pulled over. Guess who I just pulled over? Hey. Yarborough. Really? Yeah, the chief deputy driving a Dodge Charger, a souped up Dodge Charger belongs to the sheriff's office. I just clocked this son of a 96 in a 35. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sir, here's your ID back. This is your copy of the citation. If you would sign right here, it's got a court date, time it's a must appear. Yes, sir. Please slow down and have a safe day. Yes, sir. How bad of a police chief do you have to be to find yourself having to be schooled like a toddler by one of your own deputies? But this was just a small taste of the next cases that we have in store for you. You, sir, are a disrespect to our profession this evening. If you say it one more time, I'm going to hold you in custody and make you tell the judge in the morning that you have a law enforcement ID. On November 14th, 2020, an off-duty Scottsdale officer, Drew Romo, would be bar hopping that night, getting more and more intoxicated. Later that night, Scottsdale police would be dispatched outside a bar where they found Romo in the middle of the most bizarre scene. Fight, you need to go. Let's go. You need to go. They don't want you here, so you have to go. It's simple. If you don't want to be in trouble with us, just go. That's it. Dude, I'm fucking on your side. They don't want you at the business, so you need to go. I'm on your you fucking go. side. I get that, but they don't want you here today, man. You guys are fucking brutal. Hey. Side, bro. We understand what you do, but you need to, you need to, I'm a law enforcement Okay, you need to understand, hey, hey. Already, Romo displayed a very unprofessional perspective on how things are supposed to work, and it's not about who's on whose side. What did he do? Huh? What did he do? He's, he's trying to fight everybody that walks by. Right. We kick, well, after he gets all his kicks out, we kick them out. Bro, right. He ain't even fucking following no sense of business. So we literally like, oh, bro, 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 you want to be a California cop and be a dick, and you want a chest bump us? You can go ahead and do that. And guess where you're going to end up? In my fucking jail. The officers, however, made it clear that they would not be giving him any special treatment. What am I doing wrong? You're too intoxicated. You're trying to pick fights with people. Every club has asked you to leave On multiple times. On what club? Times. Every club you've gone to. On what? What am I doing? I've removed you twice from two different clubs. Do you not understand that? What am I six or two? I don't know what that is. Romo found himself baffled when facing real professionalism and chose rather to argue with them like a toddler, but the officers had even less patience than Romo. Trying to understand yeah. what are they kicking me out for? You're too intoxicated in the state of Arizona. Oh, what? Listen to me for one second. Get it through your head right here, okay? You've had too much to drink and you're not processing anything anymore. Arizona law requires that if a bar realizes you're too intoxicated, they must remove you within 30 On minutes. Their own. You've been removed. He was at the when he was at the line. He kept on hitting the bouncer's hand when he was trying to get through. The bouncer just kept on brushing him off. So. It is utterly insane how someone so immature as Romo could become a cop, but the officers detaining him felt even more shame sharing the same job as him. Go home. I'm going to go home. Oh, now you're going to go home? You just said you didn't want to go home. Now you, you want to go home? Are you serious? Now you Let's, want to go home. But sit him down. Dude, I have a fucking law enforcement ID. You, sir, are a disrespect to our profession this evening. If you say it one more time, I'm going to hold you in custody and make you tell the judge in the morning that you have a law enforcement ID. You're in disgrace right now.
So you need to shut your damn mouth before I call your supervisor and we go from there and you don't lose your job in California while you're visiting Arizona. I don't so you so you close your mouth and let us do our job now because you can't make adult what decisions. Sure. The officer held back nothing and absolutely schooled Romo with all the rage he felt towards him for having the same badge as him. But this alone wouldn't be the end of his immaturity. We got assault multiple witnesses watched about 15 times him swatting the hand of the security guards away in line trying to grab us. Um, we already asked them to go home tonight. Cool. So if you got a victim and you got someone that articulates it, he's already been kicked out of Whiskey Road. Come on. Service. Are you either, serious? Sometimes you got it. I have a fucking it's a ID. I got the protocol. It's a protocol. Whiskey referred to the original bar that Romo had found himself kicked out of, and in his intoxication, tried to enter another, causing the whole scene. Sitting here waiting for our table, and he was just like, in my, like just looking at me, and I was like, is there like a problem? Yeah. And he was like, uh, what is that? There's going to be a problem. There's going to be a problem. And then that's when he turned around and started talking to him and pushing him. Yeah. Everyone in the group says that he came over to every single one of them and said, you want to have a problem tonight? You want to make a problem? You want to have a problem? And then all of them watched him get in Edgar's face, swat his hands away. Edgar's just, hey man, he got back up, back up. So that was fun. With the way the witnesses described Romo, it would have been easier to believe he was a college frat boy than a cop. Let's see how Romo defended himself from this. Just go home. It's time to go home. You can't get into any more bars. Your buddies asked you to leave and you would not leave and you walked off on your own and they left you. But it's a bar. That's what you're not getting. It's great. Yeah, but I don't understand why I'm fucking under arrest. When it's a fucking ball. Because you had a security guard asking you to leave and you kept swatting his hand. Bro, I'm under arrest for a fucking bar feud when I told you. you told me what? You're so intoxicated, nothing sinking in. Bro, it's You're seriously gonna fucking put me in this position? His arguments with the officer felt like a child not wanting to eat his broccoli. Even if it was just a bar feud, Romo still deserved to be arrested 10 times over. See, this is the other part that's a disgrace to our profession that you're not catching. If you were a true cop and you cared about the blue, you would not put me in this position right now. You would have freaking gone home when I asked you to. Okay? That's the position you put me in. Yeah, I do think you should have gone home. Even your, even your friends. Where is your bachelor party? It's in fucking Phoenix. They're by your, you're by yourself, bro. They left you. You understand that? They left you. Come on, dude. All right. That is what reveals just how sad of a case Roma was. Not even his friends could tolerate his obnoxiousness. You're, you're being arrested for assault and disorderly conduct. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not kidding you, sir. I have five people that provided me the exact same statement about you trying to physically assault them and then watch you physically assault the bouncer by swatting his hand away. They noted at least 10 times. Bro. The security guard noted at least 15 times. Watching Romo's world crash around him was priceless, and so is his next attempt to evade responsibility. I will tell you that honestly. Do you have a lieutenant I information? Have, no, I don't. Okay. So you would like for me to blind call your agency tomorrow and tell them that I arrested you and then ask to speak to the police chief? Who would you like me to who would you like me to notify? Because if you don't want to give me any information, it's gonna be a blind call to whoever I can get a hold of. I don't have a to be honest with you, are you? I'm listening. To be honest with you, yeah, I would. I would hope you'd be honest. Yes. You're not. It's as if there was no end to Romo's man-childness, even refusing to give his employment information and getting another lecture in return. Is there a fucking fit? Do you slide your hands down into I the can't. Cave? There you go. Keep, keep, hang on. Keep work, keep working your hands down. There's no, elbow grooves. Okay. It's a short ride, okay? Yeah, whatever. Um. That right there is what real professionalism and integrity looks like. Something so many cops like Romo lack. But Romo's desperate attempts wouldn't stop from there. What's up, man? I can't fucking breathe. Okay. Well, sir, at this current time, you are in a jail facility, and the correct term probably would be prisoner. Um, however, 
we're trying to get you released, but you're not showing any signs of sobering up that allows us to believe that you can go out and act accordingly in society. The officer set the example straight to him, but every word that entered Romo's ear went out the other end. Sir? You're continuously banging on the jail cell doors. Because I can't breathe. I have anxiety. Oh, I'm completely understanding the anxiety part. I am sobering up. What do you want me to do? Well, I can't breathe in here. I understand that. I am ordered to inform you of this information. Upon your release, you are ordered to call Lieutenant Scott Blinn, and I will provide you his phone number. I, and I know phone. Okay, and you are ordered to call him immediately upon your release to report your actions. What exactly did Romo expect them to do? Hook him up with a bigger cell? He seemed to be forgetting that this was a jail, not a hotel. I feel like a fucking animal here, and this ain't right. You were arrested. Cop to cop. You were arrested before, right? I have. And they end up in a jail, right? So you were arrested. So you end up in a jail. I There's have. nothing we can do special for you because of your situation. No. You this is this is this goes back to our conversation from three hours ago when we tried our best to give you the professional courtesy that it deserved. I gave it to you. No, 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 no. We tried to give you the professional courtesy. I gave it to you. <laughs> okay. I was in handcuffs when I gave it to you. Okay. People obviously don't change overnight, but Romo should have had the consciousness to at least feel some guilt for his actions instead of trying to defend them. Romo would eventually be fired shortly after this incident and was charged with assault and disorderly conduct, having to pay a total fine of $650. This next case, however, would be similar to Romo's, but at the same time, entirely different. We'll take a report. He's not going to take it, we'll take it. On October 26, 2015, Sergeant Michael Roadside was driving his vehicle on a New Jersey rest stop when he somehow managed to find himself in one of the most terrible yet delicate situations. How are you doing? I am not strong. You okay? Yeah. I had a prostate surgery. Okay. I'm on right. anesthesia right now. I'm okay. trying to get home to cinema. Okay. I will pay for her, you know, whatever yeah. I have to do. Okay. What happened? You're from Mom? Like, I, I can't, um, I gotta get home. Okay. All right, fair enough. I'm gonna make sure she's okay. You all right? You want to handle her? No, I'm fine. Okay. I, I just want to get home. All right, fair enough. Whatever. Roadside had hit a woman's car from the back of his vehicle and claimed it was due to his medical condition at the time. But the woman's side of the story revealed something else. This guy, I, he got out of the car, I told him to travel, his uniform's inside out, I got out of the car, and I'm like, are you going to call the cops? He's going to take care of this. He said, I'll take care of this. He said, I'll take care of this. I'll write you a check for $1,000. I said, are you a cop? He said, yeah, I'm a cop. I go, where's your uniform? His uniform is going inside out. He said, it's in the car. Do you want to see? I go, where's your weapon? And he pulled his thing over like this to show me that he had his weapons on him. Okay. And the woman referred to a loose bottle cap that fell out of roadside clothes, and wouldn't you know it, it belonged to something that is very much illegal to consume before driving. I said, so you get back in your car right now, my son will stay trooper, get back in your car, you're scaring me. And, and then I got in my car, and, okay. and I called my fiance. I'm like, I don't know what to do, I'm scared. I right. call the cops. All right, first, let me get your, uh, obviously, you, you know, let me get your uh, license registration insurance. We'll take a report. He's not going to take it, we'll take it. The officer immediately reassured the woman that he meant business and was in no mood to hand out any special favors. Oh, and also, when I, I pulled, he was in the gas station. I was getting gas. Oh, back there? Yeah, he was in front of me. He what? He was in front of me. Okay. And he stopped right in the middle, like, and so I had to he back up and go around him. them. And then I came up here, and when I stopped for the light, for the stop sign, I started to hit Later, Roadside confessed to being heavily under the influence prior to the accident. Not only was he incredibly careless, but he also tried to cover it up by faking such a serious condition. Do you know? 
Uh, well, that's the problem. Um, he comes out of the car, his shirt's all in puck. He's got, I don't know if it's saliva or vomit on his shirt. Seems this is just a classic example of what cops do to get away with crimes they are meant to be solving and poison the system with their selfishness. He remains suspended without pay pending an internal investigation, a state police spokesman said that Tuesday. Roadside's attorney, Robert Eberup, said his client was a 29-year veteran of the force with a relatively clean driving record and was accepting full responsibility for his actions. However, there were still plenty more corrupt cops that are not man enough to admit their mistake like Roadside. Some, in fact, even commit their crimes while on duty, like in this next case. This is very awkward for me, Mr. Uh, Hernandez. On June 10, 2024, Officer John Hernandez from Albuquerque, New Mexico was en route to begin his shift when another officer noticed him weaving recklessly well over a hundred miles per hour. The state he found Hernandez in was nothing short of disgusting. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. What's the hurry? I'm just in my way to work. I'm at, I have like nine, 11 minutes left. Yeah, 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 nine minutes left? Yeah, I okay. win that for Okay, and, and also, you're not staying in your lane. I'm sorry, boss. I have a low tire. That's all it is. Come back here and talk to me real quick. Yeah. Here. Did you, even, so did you even see me on the freeway? I didn't see you. I'm sorry. Okay. You didn't see me at all? No, sir. You didn't see me at all? No, I didn't. Okay, were well, you doing a buck 12, and I turned around. I actually saw you in the median. I turned around, and okay. I've been chasing you probably since the 2-12-ish. Okay. Hernandez listened and responded to every word of the responding officer with the alertness of a goldfish, indicating some foul play afoot. Oh, he's not here. So, Mr. Hernandez, where are you coming from? Uh, Las Lunas. Where, where, where do you live at in Las Lunas? What's that? Where do you live at? Uh, Hunting Ranch. Hunting Ranch? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. 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 Hernandez, like, goodbye. I tried to put your gun away. Okay, yes, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be flat honest with you. Okay, one, you're speeding. Yes, sir. With no lights on. Yes, sir. Two, I don't know why you keep going off the road. That's why I stopped you. Honestly, can I can I show you why? Well, you, you can tell me why. Hernandez had a fake excuse ready for the officer, but at that point it was too late as the officer was already on to what Hernandez was trying to hide. Hernandez, when did you last drink alcohol? Uh, yesterday. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna check your eyes real quick. Okay. Put your toes together. Yep. I'm talking about flashing lights. What time? What time yesterday? Uh, probably 12. Twelve midnight or noon? Twelve noon? Yes, sir. Okay, noon yesterday? Yes, sir. So like twelve hours ago? Yes, sir. Okay. No, 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 no. Like noon the day prior. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna check your eyes. Already with the officer's first question, Hernandez began backtracking on his own answers in a desperate bid to seem truthful. See my fingertip? Yes, sir. Follow my fingertip with your eyes only. Don't move your head. Yes, so, Mr. also, Mr. Hernandez, can you explain why I would smell alcohol from your breath? I don't know why, sir. Okay, here we go. Don't move your head. This is very awkward for me, Mr. Uh, Hernandez. Hernandez had begun showing signs of clear intoxication, a fact that the officer probably had wished wouldn't be true, but we don't always get what we want. Okay, Mr. Hernandez, two more quick tests. We'll possibly get you on your way. Any yes. problems walking, bouncing, or turning? Uh, I mean, just boost, but nothing crazy. Okay. Those are those what you use every single day? Uh, yeah. Rel relatively. I changed the... Uh, uh, insoles on them, but... Go over it? Yes. Yep, on my light. Yes, sir. Face your police unit, put your heel and toes together. Right now, the only thing I want you to do is listen to me, okay? Okay. Can you imagine a straight line from your left foot to my right foot? Wanting to give Hernandez the benefit of the doubt, the officer gave him one last chance by conducting further sobriety tests, a chance that Hernandez would not end up taking. Okay. Unfortunately, Mr. Hernandez, I believe that you're... Well, over the legal limit. Okay. Okay. Take a few. So, so I will, I will, I will do the favor of that. Would you, would you, would you disagree with me? Like, I, I wouldn't agree with you, sir. No, I said, I said, would you disagree with me? I would disagree. Okay. Can I put it in my unit? Sure. You can tell the officer was not happy with this outcome, but still had the integrity to do the right thing, unlike Hernandez. Yes. Your, your speech. I've never heard you speak. The oath, the strong odor, your eye movements. Okay. Okay, but my eye movement and nothing else. Like, okay. I'm, I'm not going to argue. Oh, I know you're not. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, here. You are now under arrest 
for driving under the influence of intoxicating liquor and or drugs. The next going plan consent act requires you to submit to a breath test to determine the alcohol content of your blood. If you refuse, you will lose your next driver's license or non emergency operating privilege for one year. If you are convicted in court for driving under the influence, you may also receive a greater sentence if you have refused to be tested. Furthermore, you will be charged with aggravated DWI, which you know. Imagine serving with the police for over three years and end up losing your job and the respect of your colleagues simply because you couldn't comply with the most basic of laws. It's always disappointing to learn that one of our officers is accused of breaking the same laws they are sworn to enforce. APD Chief Harold Medina stated in a press release following Hernandez's arrest. We will move forward with an internal investigation while criminal charges are handled by the judicial system. And now for our final case of the day, we have one of the most blatant examples of how corrupt officers let their personal vendettas affect their responsibilities to the public. All you're going to do is give them more ammo. Right. In September of 2023 in Braunfels, Texas, a woman, Trevino, found herself being pulled over by an officer, Patrick Akers, over a simple traffic stop. However, the events leading up to the stop and Akers' previous history spend an entirely different tale. So this is that female, Trevino. She flicks me off as I'm going back to the back of my patrol car, fails the single left hand to go into the left lane. She flicks me off, so I just wanted a second to make contact with her. How's it going? Officer Akers, New Braunfels Police who Department. You are. Okay. I know who you are. That's fine. Well, the reason why you being... over for flipping you off. No, ma'am. The reason That's why... You are. you are retaliating against me. You turn your sirens on and everything ran over here like a crazy person. Okay. Well, ma'am, the reason why you're being contacted is you failed to signal the lane change when you flicked me off. Okay. The truth was that Akers had a history of making unlawful arrests, especially with this woman Trevino leading to her flipping him off in the first place. I have three officers here. He's hurt me before. Please don't let him. Do yeah, could you, would you mind, Henderson, go ahead and detain her? In cuffs? No, because he's, he's done illegal to me. Okay, all right. Okay. You're under arrest or failed to signal lane change? I'm under arrest. Yes, ma'am. I'm under arrest for failing to signal a lane change. Yes, ma'am. Despite having a run-in with Acres before, even Trevino couldn't believe that he would arrest her for something so petty over such an unbelievably selfish reason. You guys just know this is bullshit. You guys just know it is. You guys know it is. You're under arrest. Grab my phone. Grab my phone. Please grab me. Please grab me. What's that? Yeah, she has a driver's license, but... I'm not turning this off. No. Before consulting his partner on what to do with Trevino, Akers and the officer conveniently decided to switch off their body cam. But little did they know, Trevino had left her phone on recording. She she comes down the street, comes right towards me, and as I'm walking back by the car to do nothing, she flicks me off. Mm -hmm. And then as she does that, she gets on the lane, fails the single lane change. Mm -hmm. okay. I think it's going to be an issue. Huh? Think it's gonna be an issue? Do you know your history, right? Yeah. So any other person you would write a ticket to, right? Yeah. So that's that's how you have to treat every every interaction. Okay. During the conversation, it became clear that Akers knew exactly what he did was wrong, but only seemed concerned with whether he would be able to get away with it or not. So let's write the ticket. Okay. Go about it that way. Sounds good. Okay. All you're going to do is give her more ammo. Uh, uh, right? Yep. So write the ticket. Just fill it out. Akers believed he was all good writing a report and accurately portraying the events in order to cover up the real reason he had violated Trevino's rights, something that he would soon regret. So here's the thing, right? Had, had you just gone on about your day, right? So your, your intense hatred is causing you to do other things that is, that is drawing attention to you. You need to move on with your life. Move along, okay? 
these officers really thought that they could just restrict Trevino's freedom, but luckily the phone audio revealed even more incriminating evidence. Okay, I know about the court stuff, yeah. everything that occurred. And it was if wrong. Officer Akers had done anything wrong, he wouldn't be here right now, That's right? That's not true. That's 100% true. It's true. It is. So, you need to move on and not be running around flicking people off, right? I get it. That's your First Amendment if you want to flip people off, but what it did is it caused you to create a, to create a hazard to a traffic infraction right in front of an officer, right? The officer was plain wrong. If the Justice Department worked, Officer Akers would have been fired long ago. And luckily, it finally pulled through. An internal investigation would be conducted against Officer Akers leading to his termination. In his letter firing Akers, Lane cited the officer's disciplinary record which included 13 complaints filed against him since February 2021. Eight of those complaints resulted in some form of discipline or reprimand according to police records. So Akers' satisfying ending finally brings us to the end of today's cases. If you enjoyed it, please consider showing your support by liking this video and make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. And if you want to see more, check out the next video right here.